Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, and welcome back. Today, we are going to be making my mini meatloafs stuffed with mashed potatoes. Yep. You don't see the mashed potatoes because I got them in the refrigerator cool. And make your mashed potatoes however you make yours. I boil mine in water with a little bit of salt and garlic, garlic salt. And I add sticks of butter, depending on how many potatoes I got. So make yours however you want, okay? Alright, so we're going to need some brown sugar, breadcrumbs, paprika, granulated onion. We're going to need the honey bear. We're going to use some of this uh, Sunday so seasoning, Italian seasoning, ground mustard. We're going to use some of this brown sugar seasoning by Kinder's. We're going to use some uh, ketchup, some Worcestershire sauce. That's uh, a little bit of red onion there. I've got a little yellow, orange, and red bell pepper there. Some Parmesan, and this is parsley. We're going to get started. There's your shot. Absent the mashed potatoes that are cooling in the refrigerator. I'll be right back. All right, let's get this party started. I'm going to go ahead and put a little olive oil in here just so that I can saute that uh, onion and bell pepper. And we're going to get that going. And while they're sauteing, we're going to make a little sauce. So we're going to get that going. And with the onions, the bell peppers. And then we're going to put a little bit of this soul seasoning in here. And I'm also going to put a little bit of the paprika. I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, mustard in there as well. The ground mustard. And then I'm also going to put in a little bit of the granulated onion at this time. Because we want to season every bit of this, okay? And then we're going to put in, lastly, some of this Italian seasoning. And then we're going to let this saute up, okay? And while that's doing what it's doing... Let me set up so we can get the next step going. Hold on. Okay, also to this, I did add, I say about a tablespoon or so of garlic. Okay, now we're getting ready to make the sauce. All right, now to this sauce, we're going to add, I already put the ketchup in there. I started doing it before I thought about, don't forget to hit that button. Okay, and uh, we're going to put a little paprika in here. That's probably, I'd say close to half a cup of ketchup. Okay. We're going to put in that paprika. We're going to put in some of this uh, Kinder's brown sugar. We're also going to put in some of that granulated onion. A little bit of that ground mustard. Some of that brown sugar. And then we're going to put in some tomato paste. I love these little things simply because that way you don't always have to throw away a whole can. You can measure out about how much you want. And that'll do us. And then we're going to put in some honey. And this is going to be so yummy. I'm going to have to give me some more honey bear. And then we're just going to risk this all together. And that's done. Alright, so now I'm getting ready to set up and we're going to get that meatloaf. Our little meatloaf minis going. Hold on. Okay, the very first thing we're going to do, here's some mashed potatoes. And I would say that's probably a little more than a cup. I'm going to put some of this Parmesan in there. And that's probably about a fourth of a cup, something like that. We're just going to mix that all up. And of course, these are cold. You could do it when it's hot. It's just that I used the mashed potatoes to go with something else earlier. So I'm just saving these to make this dish, okay? Alright, 
So that's all we're going to do to that. Okay, now onto the meat. We're going to get that egg in there. Got to season it up as well. So there is the sole seasoning right there. A little bit of the Kinder's brown sugar in there. You want all the flavors to coordinate with one another. We're going to put in some of that ground mustard. We're also going to put in some of the granulated onion. I'm going to put in some of that Italian seasoning. And then the Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. And we don't want to forget the breadcrumbs. And we're not done yet. We still got to put a couple of more items in here. Now we're going in with the bell pepper and onion and garlic mixture that we sauteed. That's got to go in there. It seems like a lot, but let me tell you, these flavors are going to be off the chain to put in our parsley. So now we just need to combine all of this stuff up. Look, you can see my glove. Look, I tried to turn it into a skirt. <laughs> just tuck her in a little bit. So now you just need to not throw it all over the floor, but combine all of this together. Remember what I told you, start from the bottom, work it up. That way you can get all those flavors that's at the bottom all the way up to the top. And when you're putting, using the mashed potatoes and using your bell pepper and onion mixture, you have to let those things cool down before you add them into this ground beef, okay? Make sure you let them cool down. You don't want to start cooking your meat before you're ready for your meat to do what you want it to do. Okay, so that's combined pretty well. All right, the next item on the Price is Right, we're going to spray these containers. Don't be stingy with it either. Okay? Don't be stingy because you don't want the stuff to stick, okay? So don't be stingy. And, of course, I use my Butter Crisco. Use whichever kind you have. Miss avocado oil, if whatever. Use whatever you have. If you don't have a cooking spray, get you some cooking grease. Put it on a paper towel and wipe it up in there. Okay, so now, I guess I'm going to move this over so you can see this process better. Let me put the camera down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Because I want you to see, I'm going to use an ice cream scoop. Okay, and the main reason, and I normally, you know, I don't do the measuring thing and everything, but I want these to be as close to size as possible. And that's why I'm going to use the ice cream scoop. And then when I get it in the, from the scoop, I'm going to put it in a ball. Then I'm just going to stick it in there. Okay, so that's pretty much how we're going to do that. And like I said, we want them to be about the same size. Because it'll just it make a world of difference, plus the cooking process for this. Okay, we're just going to dump her in there. It's not going to be identical because I just, I have that issue. Okay, and so, so that's how I'm going to continue to keep doing this until I get them all made up. And like I said, make it into a little ball and just put it in there. And you're going to see why we're doing it that way in just a minute. Now this next step is really, really easy. You just make a little whale in the middle. You've seen me do this kind of thing before. Kind of push it, uh-oh to the side a little bit. We're going to make that little whale. See that? That's what we're going to do. We push it down a little bit. Make a little bit of a whale. Alright. Make a little bit of a whale in the middle of that because that's where we're going to put those mashed taters. Yes we are. We're going to put those mashed potatoes right in there. This is something your children can help you out with, too. My kids used to help me back in the good old days. Now they're just into eating.
Yes. So you make your little well. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to close these up too. Okay. Wells are cheap. Now the next thing we're going to do is take some of that mashed potato. Put it right on in there. Go through and just put it right on in there. So yummy, so yummy, so, so yummy. This is definitely a rotation item. Okay, so she overstuffs sometimes. That's the problem. She just can't help herself. She has got to overstuff. Whatever she's making, she has got to do. Be extra, put too much. She just can't help herself. She just cannot help herself. Okay, I'm done fighting with these things. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to baste these and um, we're going to pull it out. We're going to bake these for 30 minutes on 350. And that's what we're going to do. 30 minutes total time. But after that, after the 15 minutes, we're going to go ahead and pull it out and we're going to baste it one more time. Okay? Don't be afraid to use the glaze. This is so good, trust me. This is really delicious. It really is. For real. So, but like I said, um, make sure your oven is preheating. When you get ready to start doing the meatball part of this, putting it into the little balls and getting it all in there and stuff, go ahead and get that oven preheated to 350, okay? And this is going to cook. We're going to, like I said, if after 15 minutes, bring it back out and baste it again, okay? So now this is going to go in the oven, 350, 15 minutes when I pull it back out. I'll be right back. Okay, this is what it looks like after the first 15 minutes. We still need to reglaze and go another 15, okay? I'll be back. All right, I actually let mine cook for 45 minutes instead of the 30. I wanted to make sure those so that meat was cooked, okay? So there we go. All right, things made easy with Gigi. All day, every day. Please like, subscribe, feel free to share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time Gigi uploads a new video. Everybody be blessed and stay safe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.